And if I'm doing it in this small area, then it'd be really easy to do it in some bigger ones. And so wanting to draw awareness around those themes as a whole, digging into that so that hopefully as I'm presented with bigger concepts and ideas and opportunities, I'm not failing to step into the the chance to actually like walk them out in real time and in real life. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you're doing great today. I am going to be talking today about mistakes that I've been making <laughs> recently and what I've been learning through that. I'll preface that by saying like in preparation for this video, it felt odd, not because I was making mistakes, like that's, that's just a pretty standard part of being alive and operating as a person in the world and as a person at work, but like keeping track of those things, that felt really weird to me. I was like, I feel like I'm somehow like keeping a record of all the things that I've done wrong this week so that I can then come on and talk about them. So I will say I'm not advocating for in general a culture of let's keep a list of all the things that we did wrong this week or the things that we made mistakes on for the sake of talking about them. But the reason that I'm wanting to do this as a theme or a concept in the video today is that I think there can be a tendency at least for me, when my job or my position is to create awareness or understanding around something, in this case, disability integration into the world and into the workplace, that I can assume the posture of that coach and content can be created with this understanding of, I've already walked through it and here's the answer or here's the solution that I've come to. And what I am really hoping that this channel does is invite you into that process with me of figuring things out as I go and some of the trial and error that just naturally occurs in that process. That's how I learn things. I think that's not specific to me. I think a lot of people learn that way. But it's like I very much learn by doing and by being on the job. And, and part of that means that I'm going to get things wrong. And then I'm going to learn from those mistakes or I want to learn from those mistakes. So today I'm inviting you into some of the things over the past week that have caught my attention and triggered me to take pause and recognize, oh, I just did the opposite of what I intended to do, or I just stepped into a bias or was minimizing here of someone and talking about it so that I can continue to grow and learn from that and hopefully you can grow and learn from that with me. So let's get started. This is gonna be kind of storytelling and then recap storytelling and then recap is my general construct for this video. Also, hi, if you're new here, my name is Katherine Hubert. I'm a disability integration coach. I practice that coaching actively and on a daily basis here at my restaurant station S in Greensboro, North Carolina, where we have an integrated hiring model So about 50% of our team is disabled, 50% is non-disabled, and this is our channel where I talk about what that process is like. For me, the things that I'm learning through the process of owning and running the business that I have and the process of doing that over the past almost six years now and inviting you into that with me. My hope is that you are here because you are interested in understanding disability better and understanding how to fold in and incorporate. That's part of that integration aspect of disability into our world and into our work in our lives more. You could be coming from a perspective, either a non-disabled person or a disabled person and hoping to see that happen. 
but that's what we're all about here on this channel. This is your friendly reminder to please subscribe to our channel. Point number one, the mistake that I made was taking away someone's voice and not realizing that I did it until after it was too late. First of all, this happened last week. This was a big checkpoint for me. I was standing in our kitchen. I came around the corner onto the kitchen line. One of my chefs was already in position on the line and she was in the center station area, which is the cue to everyone that she's the person in charge when she's in that position and she's deaf. That is important context to the story. One of the servers had come up to the window and asked a question. I heard that question as I was coming around the corner and I heard and witnessed my chef pause and not understand what the question was that was being asked and I just automatically answered it from behind her. And then the server was like, okay, and walked away. And I could see the chef turn around and kind of be like, whatever, like they got the answer. Not really being able to, to see that I was the one who provided that answer. As soon as that happened, like it was a pretty immediate check for me. Not immediate enough to stop me from doing it in the first place. But as soon as that happened, I, realized I was like this is what we talk to our staff about all the time like this is something that I've talked to my chef about it's something that we've talked to our team about the importance of respecting her position and making sure that communication is going to her and not around her that we're not bypassing the person who's in charge and the person who has the information because communication may take a couple of extra steps whether that's learning the signs figuring out how to communicating that to communicate that if lip reading is not being successful then writing something down like however that needs to be communicated they were taking the time to actually talk to my chef who is deaf and not talking to other people around her and getting that information from someone else and i like did that exact same thing and i did it without even thinking about it like it was just instantaneous. Like I know the answer. I can see that there's a communication pause between the two of them and I just said it. That was not okay on <laughs> several different levels. Like I checked myself. One, she was the person who was in charge. Two, I did the thing that we are training our staff not to do, which is bypass communication and go to someone else. And then third, there was like a really slimy feeling that I had about it because I did all of that without her being aware because I was standing behind her and since she couldn't hear me or see me, there was no real awareness of the fact that I had done that. And so I was like, I just cut her out of that conversation all together and that was really disrespectful. What I'm learning through this process is that just because I can do something doesn't mean I am needed to. Help consent, that's a term I would like to coin, is a thing and something that I need to practice more. Does the other person want my help? Do they need it? Have they asked for it? I don't need to be the one to make that decision, especially in a situation like this one where I didn't even give my coworker the opportunity to weigh in. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> the second mistake, which happened twice in the same day yesterday, was focusing on the intellectual side of something instead of the physical or the practical. My two stories where that happened, one, I was talking to my general manager. She mentioned how she had had to pee for like 20 minutes and hadn't gone yet. And then I launched into like such a faceless laugh. <laughs> oh my God. I then <laughs> launched into how I had been learning about how denying those physical cues in our body is damaging to our nervous system regulation and that one of the best things that we can do to help regulate our nervous system is by listening to our body cues and responding to them into the moment in the moment so it's like you need what you're thirsty go drink water you need to pee go pee you need to eat something go eat something like and then i was talking about how i had practiced it the day before and then that got like on a tangent and like we talked about this concept for probably like 10 or 15 minutes and then she was like actually i still have to pee like oh my gosh she wasn't calling me out or or making me feel bad about it like that's that's not the point of the story the point of the story is me then realizing I had this opportunity when she presented a need 
to encourage, like, go take care of that need. And instead, I just started talking about how we should be taking care of our needs instead of encouraging that to actually happen. There was a lot going on in the brain and the body was getting ignored, which I then did again. Later that day, we had someone come in and talk to our team about nutrition and wellness and well-being. We were doing a staff development. And one of the things that really stood out to me was the fact that the hunger cues that I'm experiencing are like late stage hunger cues. They're not the early hunger cues that signal like it's time to eat something right now. They're the like, oh, I have waited too long to eat. And I, I think I had some awareness around that, but I was thinking like, oh, that means I should have eaten like five or 10 or 20 minutes ago. And she was like, no, that's more like you should have eaten an hour and a half or two hours ago. It's like, oh no, that's really bad. Like I didn't realize that I was ignoring hunger for so long. And then I'm just at the stage of like, I'm feeling kind of lightheaded. My focus is gone. My blood sugar's dropped. Like I'm fatigued, all of these kind of things. My head hurts, whatever it is. Like then I'm really clued into like, I needed to eat something. So then what did I do? Had all this head knowledge, even debriefed and talked about it with my staff. And then I immediately switched gears and went into like, I need to set up for a workshop that I have tonight. I need to go home and walk my dog real fast. Did that, came back, did the workshop, cleaned up. And then I'm like, it's 9 p.m. And I haven't eaten anything and I don't feel very good. And I feel kind of lightheaded and I feel tired and my energy's dipped and I can feel myself getting cranky. And I was like, I just did the freaking thing that I learned about this afternoon, which could have been a great cue to be like, hey, it's been like this workshop, this development finished and it's been four hours since I've eaten anything. Like now is a good time to eat something before I head into another five hours of work. And instead I just went into my other five hours of work and then the repercussions of that is that I ate dinner late I made me fall asleep late I woke up this morning I felt groggy I had a hard time focusing at work I didn't get everything I needed to done today and so now I have work that's carrying over and that sucks and I could have eaten a snack and that would have helped me a lot so what are we taking away from this Some of this is disability education specific. Some of it is just being a human. The themes that are consistent, I feel like are, and this is part of why I'm coming on to talk about this today, is that it's very easy for me to live inside my head space and to analyze things, to think about things, to come up with an action plan, to organize my thoughts, to organize my day, et cetera. And sometimes it's easy to fail to take the things that I'm learning or that I'm developing in here and then practice them physically and practice them in the world where other people are going to be impacted by it. Within the work of disability integration, having a business, being a business owner, just wanting to be like a good friend and a you know participating member of my community and my society, like it's important for me to be able to live outside of my head too and especially especially in terms of advocacy work, education work, something that I feel like I experienced, which is why I'm talking about my difficulties with that, because otherwise I could just sit here and be like, hey, something that I run into a lot is the fact that people go to trainings, they do DEI work, they make a system change, they do something different within their their business or their practice or their life, and it becomes this box to check or this intellectual concept to think about. And we're not actually taking what's out here or what's on the list and then applying it to a deeper sense of understanding within our bodies or within the world. And so some of these, you know, things that I've mentioned today may seem, some feel more serious, like taking away the voice of my deaf chef. And then some things may feel more silly, like, oh, you didn't eat a snack or you didn't tell your coworker to go pee. But there are some consistent themes there. And if I'm doing it in this small area, then it'd be really easy to do it in some bigger ones. And so wanting to draw awareness around those themes as a whole, digging into that so that hopefully, as I'm presented with bigger concepts and ideas and opportunities, I'm not failing to step into the the chance to actually like walk them out in real time and in real life 
which was one of my goals last year, was to like take my imagination, take the things that are going on inside of my head and like put them out into the world. Like don't just hold on to them inside. And this I think is another form of where that can happen for me. I stepped into a meta moment here and started talking about how talking about doing something instead of just doing something is damaging, which was damaging and not helpful in that moment. My tendency to step into my head instead of my body was on full display and it impacted an opportunity where I could have encouraged a coworker in real time to take care of her body. Thoughts, questions, please drop them below. Thanks for being here. I so appreciate you and we'll see you next week. All right, Team Truth Works, Shajanas team. Your keyword this week is macaron.